You're in tune to 93.1 Real FM. It's 19 hours and it's now time for the 93.1 Real FM News in Detail. so happy that you can join us. I'm Gabriella Patram. Welcome. Locally, 10 more COVID-19 deaths were added today to the death toll from the virus in Guyana, taking the total number of deaths recorded in the past 26 days to 147. According to the Ministry of Health, seven of the 10 recently announced deaths were unvaccinated persons. One person was fully vaccinated, another was partially vaccinated, and the vaccination status of the 10th person is unknown. September has a shot uh, to the front as the deadliest month for COVID-19 in Guyana and the month with the highest number of new cases. Over 5,600 new cases of the virus have been detected since the 1st of September. Additionally, Regions 3 Regions 3 and 4 continue to be the hotspots region for the virus, with more than 80% of the new cases being confirmed in the two regions. The Health Ministry is warning, however, that every region has active cases. There are 3,877 active cases in the country, with 30 persons still in the COVID-19 intensive care unit. The ongoing COVID surge in the country appears out of control. The main opposition is calling on the government to act fast to reset its COVID-19 strategy as the new cases and deaths continue to touch every region. The government has indicated that it is putting systems in place to cater for an increase in hospitalizations as the positive cases continue to climb. <music> Still in the health sector, the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation has made it clear this afternoon that any patient seeking care at the hospital will not be required to provide proof of vaccination or a negative COVID-19 test result to be allowed access. The move follows guidance issued by the Ministry of Health. The past, or this past weekend, the family of an ill law enforcement officer claimed that he was turned away by the security at the hospital because he could not provide proof of vaccination at the time. The family was forced to take him to a private hospital. In a statement this afternoon, the Georgetown Hospital reiterated the Ministries of Health positions that persons seeking medical attention do not need to provide any proof of vaccination, whether the matter is an emergency case or not. The policy is the same for all public hospitals. The Dorshan Hospital said it is committed to ensuring that all its staff members are properly apprised of the protocols and will promptly investigate and remedy any reports of patients being denied access to care. In the region, Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley certainly didn't phone in her speech at the UN General Assembly on Friday, but she did have what appeared to be an iPhone in hand while delivering emotional remarks to fellow world leaders. Motley, who became Prime Minister of the Caribbean country in 2018, spoke energetically and seemingly off the cuff, delivering vivid lines not replicated in the prepared speech uploaded to the UN website and appearing to refer to her phone at various junctures. Motley proceeded to rattle off a list of rhetorical questions challenging the audience on a variety of topics from vaccine inequity to climate change to digital regulations for preventing fake news. She also invoked Bob Marley at one point asking in the words of Robert Nesta Marley, who will get up and stand up. She said that if we can send people to the moon, as I have said over and over, solve male baldness, she rifted, then other issues too can be certainly be addressed. On the international scene, U.S. singer R. Kelly has been found guilty of exploiting his superstar status to run a scheme to sexually abuse women and children over two decades. Eleven accusers, nine women and two men, took the stand over the intense six-week trial to describe the sexual humiliation and violence at his hands. 
After two days of deliberation, the jury found Kelly guilty on all the charges he was facing. Sentencing is due on the 4th of May, and he could spend the rest of his life behind bars. The jury found Kelly, whose full name is Robert Sylvester Kelly, was the ringleader of a violent and cohesive scheme that lured women and children for him to sexually abuse. The singer most famous for the award-winning song, I Believe I Can Fly, was also found to have trafficked to women between different U.S. states, produced child pornography, and engaged in kidnapping. One woman who testified that Kelly imprisoned, drugged, and raped her said in a written statement after the verdict that she had been hiding from Kelly due to threats made against me since she went public with her accusations. I'm ready to start living my life free from fear and start the healing process, the woman identified in the court as Sonia added. And finally, in the world of sports, England all-rounder Muhin Ali has announced his retirement from Test Crack it, sorry, but will continue to play in limited overs internationals. Mohin 34 scored 2,914 runs and took 195 wickets in 64 tests, having made his debut against Sri Lanka in 2014. He won the 5th over World Cup in 2019 and is in England's preliminary squad for this year's T20 World Cup. I want to play for as long as I can and I just want to enjoy my cricket, Mohin said. I have enjoyed test critics cricket but that intensity can be too much sometimes and I feel I have done enough of it and I'm happy and content with how I have done. Mohin added that test cricket was better than any other format by far and more rewarding when he was playing well. England test captain Root uh, said Mohin would be a huge loss to the team and wish the all-rounder every success in everything he chooses to do. And that's the 93.1 Real FM News in detail. Credits to News Source, Jamaica Gleaner, and the BBC.